So yes, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this custom four by two by two PVC enclosure. And not only am I gonna show you that, I'm also gonna show you how I made the 3D background here. Um, very fun stuff. As you can see, my female ball python is about 10 months old, doesn't want to use it how as I intended, so she just hangs up at the top all the time. Maybe something to consider when you're making the height of these panels for the backgrounds. But nonetheless, this should be informative, at least to some of you, if you would like to create something similar. So let's get started. All right, so here I have a four by eight by half inch PVC. Um, I also have this table saw. I thought I was gonna use it, but you know what? I didn't use it once. There was an issue with the fence moving easily. Um, what I used for all the cuts was this right here, a circular saw um, with a high amount of teeth. You definitely want that. Um, also this, uh, this workbench, which is really just these cheap Menards um, table saws or horse saws rather um, with another sheet underneath it. I also have this guide that I made for the circular saw. It makes cutting and measuring very easy um, because usually you have to count uh, based on the distance between the blade and the right edge, the guide edge of the circular saw, but this you don't have to. So just, I use uh, YouTube and there's a bunch of ways to create these and this is the, the quickest and easiest that I found and it made it all the cuts pretty much perfect. So next up, uh, you wanna clamp it down. Also measure from the very end of your guide Make sure it's flush against it to the end of the piece and just note where it's currently at and then make sure on the right side it is the same thing so you may find yourself often trying to adjust uh, the clamps very minutely if you want nice straight cuts i'm not a carpenter by the way this is just all crap that you know i, I built one pvc enclosure before this and it sucked this one a lot better so here's the very first cut that we're gonna do. And yeah, I actually do work this fast. This is not sped up at all. All right, also another thing important to remember is that this will not fall once I cut all the way through because I do have one of those horse, is that what they're called, horse saws? Anyhow, it's, it's positioned right in the middle so that it didn't fall and screw up the edge of the cut. Oh yeah, they're called sawhorses. I'm such an idiot, don't listen to me. By the way, um, even though your sheet may say 48 inches long when you, you buy it um, from your store, I found that it was a little bit longer than that. So at this point, I have a bottom and a top. Um, I believe they the bottom and the top are the same. They're, uh, they're 24 by 48. Um, and then this next piece that I'm measuring out We'll see where I put it. I believe it's going to be at the 23 mark. Yeah, right there, 23 inches. Um, so if we have the top on, this is going to be the back, I think. Oh, yes, it would be the back. And that's just the reason it's going to be um, a little bit less, 23 inches, just because of how we're going to be fitting them together. And you'll see how it works. So also I have the side left, both the side left and side right will be 23.5 inches by 23 inches. All right, so here's the back piece. <clears throat> and what I wanna do is create vents. So we're gonna have to use a router. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna set it because this is obviously a large piece of board. I'm gonna try to get it to get in line with the workbench. But anyhow, uh, if I get here close, you can see Three inches down from three inches uh, from the side, we have an intersection point, and that's where I want the first line of vent to basically go for the humidity to escape. <clears throat> and what I want to do is have a series of them. So if I move this over, we'll do them probably every three fourths inch inches. All right. So what I'm going to do is with a pencil mark right here and the next one three-fourths would be at <clears throat> three for three-fourths plus another three-fourths would be four and a half and just keep on doing this probably for about six or seven of them so i decided to do six of them um they're seven inches long so if i take this out we have a three, starting on three, 
ending at 10 and they're all three fourths inch spaced apart and three inches from the top and then three inches from the right and basically we're going to replicate that same thing over here all right so here is the back piece and here's the lines i drew for each of the vent tracks so here is a plunge router it's going to be my first time actually using it i did a test with it seemed to work um, i made this little thing right here which is kind of like a guide that i put this onto and as you can see i'll plunge that bitter and this will go right the router rather or the bit and this will go right against the edge and this will help me try to keep it straight as possible all right here we go <laughs> All right, so as we can see, there's shavings or the chips are getting stuck in here, but really, I know I can get those out easily. There we go, it's starting to come out. Now, unfortunately, kind of when you start it, you can see it's slightly off, a little bit of a dip, but I uh, really not a huge deal for me. So I'm just gonna keep on moving this up each time, going through each one of these. But I did all six. Now, we can see there's an obvious issue. These initial two, which is where I originally wanted to end them, this line right here, I did not mark it far enough, so I couldn't see it past the router when I was going through. It was hidden and I didn't know where to stop. So I ended up stopping a little bit further and then, that basically means I have to extend these two a little bit further, um, which means lining this back up in the guide. Um, one thing that's annoying, this isn't a big deal. I don't really care about it being longer than what I had planned, but the one annoying thing, it's a very slight thing, it's an aesthetic thing, is when you first put the router, you plunge the router bit in, it doesn't create a nice edge like the ending ones. Sometimes it's a little bit off, but again, that's just an aesthetic issue. It has nothing to do with function. Once I learn how to use this better, of course, um, I'll make them a lot better. Here we go. I did a pretty decent job of lining them uh, up. Not exactly perfect, but still, uh, it'll be sufficient for my purposes. So now I have to uh, make sure I have the same exact length and distance, which is three inches from three inches, the same lines that I have to do on this side. All right, so basically here are the final six vent tracks here um pretty much did an okay job not perfectly lined up but it's definitely gonna do and they're even equal distance right and left etc so now the next part is to do put in some cable wire notches in several different areas using the router all right so here we have a uh the back piece, um, you can't see it, but the actual vents are right behind this part. Um, and I want to do the wire cutouts. All right, so this is the back. The top is going to be right here. And then the uh, radiant heat panel will have a wire. There's going to be a wire that also comes for the thermostat, which is a real small one. I'm using this. This for the router bit, half inch. And you can see it right there. And I'm just going to have this position here so that basically it's going to go right in, in the middle. So it creates a half circle. I'm not sure how big it's going to be. I didn't test first. So let's see how it does. All right. All right, there we go. Uh, basically a perfect notch, uh, definitely big enough for uh, cords to go through, multiple cords even. 
Now I'm just going to repeat this probably about four more times. All right, so here's the finished back pieces. I actually ended up putting one, two, three, four, five notches at the top just to give myself plenty of room um, and options for putting the thermostats and uh, the probes and such and all that other crap. Um, so we got our vents, nothing else needs to be done to the back. And now so we're gonna move is two more pieces that I uh, cut. The big difference here, this is three fourths, three fourths inch thick as opposed to the half inch. And that's because these are gonna be the bottom front and the top front. So this is five inches from here to here. And then this is three inches from here to here. This is gonna be the bottom one. And that's gonna be where the substrate is. Um, it's going to attach. So this is gonna be the front of the uh, enclosure. This is gonna attach on the left side and also the right side. It's gonna be inset, all right? So that's why this is, both of these are 47 inches long. All right, because those are half inches on the left and the right. Now, the one thing that's gonna make this tricky is I'm gonna be using sliding doors. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be use glass yet or just acrylic or polycarbonate, but nonetheless, no matter what the choice is, we have to create, well, you have two options really. You can create, uh, if you have a table router like this, notches, two notches that go all the way through the entirety of this portion as well as for the top this will be the bottom the top where, where the glass slides in they will also have to have the same exact notches or the tracks for the doors to slide through each other essentially now the other option is you can go to amazon and you can buy these uh these this adhesive not adhesive really uh you could use adhesive um or glue but you can also um i believe nail them in uh these plastic tracks that are created already that way if you don't have a router like this a table router which you would need um then you can just opt to go that route as well so i'm gonna go ahead and get the router set up and let me just show you real quickly so basically i was doing some test runs here um, we can see right here we have this router bit, which is one fourth inch thick. And we want to get this set up. This board here, you want to position it one second in such a way that we can see and eyeball exactly where this is going to cut. And it's very important to to make sure you're pushing against this guide right here and maintaining that distance all the way through. Now we're gonna have to have two notches. So this actually is almost in the middle. It wouldn't be right. So it's a matter of adjusting this, the distance from this right here to this guide. And it can be very tricky. Um, so I'm definitely going to uh, measure this up as much as possible to make very sure. first pass and it went pretty much perfectly all the way down. There was no none of the uh, chips were stuck in it at all now again this isn't really quite the depth i'm going to go to i'm going to go a little bit further but nonetheless it worked out pretty well now the tricky part is making sure i don't get too close to this edge uh, and blow it out so ideally we'll get a right, right around the same area if i knew math better i knew exactly where to set the, the uh, guide but uh, we'll see Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take the router bit and go up just a little bit higher. So to do that, we'll go ahead and release this clamp here. We're gonna turn this and you'll see it raise just slightly. I didn't wanna to go too much. See right there is probably pretty good. All right, so now we'll just repeat that with both of the cuts we just made. And then the first track will be done while we'll to do this process for the second. All right, so here it is off camera. I finished it. So not sure how well you can see this because I can't see what you're looking at. It's not perfect in terms of being equal distance. It's a little bit thicker over here as opposed to here. But nonetheless, this stuff's pretty strong. It's gonna work just fine. 
Um, I also didn't get the depth exactly correct, but that's still a fine, you know, we'll account for that by making the, the, the glass or the PVC, or, I mean, not the PVC, but the acrylic or the polycarbonate. Um, it'll have some forgiveness in it, uh, as it should. One area I did screw up, because I'm an idiot and I don't know how to use, I'm not very experienced, I've only used this like twice. I, I screwed up right there. The uh, Aleko, there was, it was getting caught up. The router was getting caught up right around here. And I tried to lift it up. And in doing so, I forgot to keep on pressing towards the guide. And the bit hit this part. Now, this isn't a huge deal. Um, I'm not selling this to anybody. I'm keeping it. So I'll just make this the inside lip um, on the top. All right, so here is, once again, the back. Um, we also have the bottom right here. <clears throat> and I have this raised up slightly, just with some scrap board. Um, and that's to give myself the ability to take the drill and easily get to this point right here. Um, there's also a little lip here so that I can take this. Let me set this down. And lift it up in place and then start drilling in pilot holes and also the type of screws that I'm using are one in three-fourths inch uh, the star type so if you can see that that way they really grip well. It's this type of bit, essentially. And yeah, we're gonna put in probably about four to five screws along this edge here entirely. Six screws are in. Um, it all, I think it went well. One thing I'm kind of worried about is them coming out the backside. I haven't looked at the actual backside because I was eyeballing a lot of it. But um, let's go ahead and just flip it over and check it out. All right. All looks good nothing no, no screws are popping out the sides or whatever just slightly a hair off right here but that's not a big deal at all that's like barely noticeable uh, we'll check out this area perfect over here all right putting the uh, sides up so that I can start getting a good idea of how um, the front's gonna be pieced together and then I'll be able to mark the spots where the the notches go for the uh, the glass doors. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I got both sides up. Um, I haven't put screws in the bottom. That's why there's a little bit of a bow right here, as you can see, but that'll all get uh, worked out once I do the bottom. Right now I just, only put two screws at the top and bottom uh, just so that I can, because eventually I'm gonna take them back off to put in the notches going along here. Um, a big test, which I haven't tested yet, is to see how well, hopefully it should fit perfectly, um, these bottom pieces fit in. Now, I can see that one over there is slightly off because it's not secured to the bottom yet, but nonetheless, this should go. It's gonna be inset just a little bit, and it does look like it'll be perfect. Right here, it's right up against this one. This one, let me come around. We can see this gap here. But you can see this is off, so we'll just move it over. And it'll be pretty much perfect once we screw it in. I, uh, Yeah, looking good. What I did was I, I made sure that there's an equal distance with this mark here. That's exactly where it's going to be bolted or screwed into place. And then I also marked the backtrack right here. 
this is going to give us the line here, the guide, so that I know exactly where to put in the long sort of a uh, kind of a we'll use the router in order to just put like a, a little bit of a, a, a bevel in here for the glass to slide into Took off same the sides thing. here's one of the sides this is a side right and i have my router guide up here for the plunge router and then right here is where i'm going to start right at that little hash sign and then right here is where i'm going to end i've also adjusted the depth of the bit here so that it goes about halfway <laughs> we'll see if it actually turns out that way major problem that is in the way so i had to stop damn it damn it damn it i'm using the two by four all the way across that way this won't be able to move um so yeah let's try that again so i can get to this from here to there All right, that seems to be a bit better. There is a little bit of an imperfection right here because I screwed up, I wasn't applying forward pressure to it. Um, but nonetheless, this looks like it'll be pretty good. Here's the left side. Basically a uh, slight imperfection here. Nonetheless, goes up where it needs to go. So hopefully it all fits together well. So this is the actual bottom and I secured three screws to the right and left sides. So now I'm gonna flip it over. here we go so now everything's secured pretty solid without the top obviously in the front um, I'm gonna put in the front let's find it where did it go this is the top Jesus Christ Gary where did you put the bottom oh it's over here So it should be a pretty tight fit. I'll start at the top, work myself down. Perfect. And it fits perfectly. All right, so I still need to get it lined up with these notches down here. All right, so this is gonna be the front rail. As you can see, this lines up with this one. And then this one, the back rail, this one right here will line up with this. We have to push that forward just slightly. Perfect. Wow, it actually worked out. I did something right for once. All right, very cool. Now this is bowing in. Of course, we'll, we'll fix that when we screw it from the underside, which I think I'll do now. All right, so from this point, I didn't have much footage uh, until we get to the next part. Uh, but basically, I went to, I think it was Home Depot. No, it was Lowe's. And I purchased um, uh, two sheets of glass, and I had them cut it. Um, and the dimensions, if I can recall correctly, were like si – I know that the height was 16 inches. There was an issue due to that. Um, it didn't fit in. The glass was too tall. Um, so I actually had to remake the top bar in order to fit it properly. Um, so, yeah. Here's the top. I have it flipped upside down. Obviously, it's going to be the other way with the radiant, uh, the heat panel facing down, clearly. And then, uh, yeah, I just have that secured. There's three screws, very easy. And then also this LED light strip. Now, it's adhesive. Um, it's by LifeX or LIFX, whatever. It's adhesive, but I don't want to rely on the adhesive, so I just have these staples that I hammered in, these, the uh, plastic type. And that should hold it just fine. That's what I did in my other one. Um, these will come out the back, of course. And yeah. Now, up next is the actual background. So this is XPS foam. Uh, they're two inches thick, and I have two of them on top of each other stacked. And I've glued them together with 100% with silicone. Hopefully it adheres well. It should. It says it will on the back to adhere almost to anything. And I've started to draw some rock formations, just general guidelines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool, a hot knife, 
to really get in deep. So this is four inches thick. It's going to be on the back of the terrarium. And I also have two side pieces as well, but I think I'm just going to stick the two, one two inch thick. So that way it doesn't take too much width or the, the length of the, uh, the enclosure. But yeah, the goal, the, the idea is to use this hot stick once it's turned on to really get in deep because it gives me, a, you know, I have a lot here, four inches or so thick. So not sure how this is going to work out. I haven't tried it before. I did a little, real quick test run on a smaller piece that I bought that was just one inch thick. And there's definitely a technique to it. I, I was experimenting up there initially, it looks like crap. But then I really got, I bought a better one, a, a hot knife with a long edge. And it really gives you an interesting look on some of this. But it should even be more cool with bigger depth once we have uh, the four inches to work with as opposed to just one inch. Because I even went through uh, a portion of it. So once it's uh, all sculpted out, then We'll use uh, acrylic paint. I'm not sure if I'm going to get an actual painter, like a spray painter or not. Um, I know that would make life easier, but uh, yeah, we'll see. And I will record initially here just to see how this end up, end up going because I have no clue. All right, here we go. They have real thick cuts going on here. So I'm gonna do a real, kind of just a deep one. And I'm making sure to vary. I don't wanna do just like a straight line. And it's really cutting through easy. Now I'm going to go like this to kind of like just edge this through, kind of like create a nice gradient, hopefully. And I'm just kind of pressing mildly. Hard. Not, not not really hard at all actually I have this uh, this gun on the highest setting What I have so far looks pretty cool has potential but still there's a lot to go I'm gonna hand held, hold this while I just show you the process and how easy it is and fun really it is to cut this stuff Here's the fully carved out main piece. Um, I haven't painted anything yet. And I decided instead of spending a bunch of money on a spray gun, I'm just gonna get Krylon, uh, this flat black here. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. I have no clue. Last night I had uh, just a random can of black paint and I did one of the side pieces. You can still see some pink which I uh, will have to give another coat. Um, but it still looks pretty cool. Um, I will be doing like gray and browns to try to work it in after the fact. So we're gonna do this flat black here now. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a shot. And uh, yeah, we'll see if this is at all something that I can get away with three cans with. I bought three cans of this stuff just for the, the, the uh, actual black. And then I'll a hand paint with a paintbrush all the other details. All right, here we go. 
this is gonna get all over the place. One second, I'm opening it up. All right, here we go. So I have the uh, flat black all on as well as the side panels over here as well. So next part is going to be adding the actual just uh, additional texture. I want kind of like a lighter portion. So I have this gray. I have this black. This is actually, what is this? Yeah, just steel gray. Um, not sure if I need, if I'm going to mix these two together. I'm going to do a tiny spot here on the side. I think, actually, I'm not really sure if I maybe should try to get the brown in there as well. Maybe first, initially. Again, I'm not even sure if I want to have brown. I think this kind of like lava cool sort of effect looks pretty cool as is. Um, I, I Really, I should probably just do a test. I tried making this little cave thing over here. I think it's not going to work, though. But maybe what I can do is just uh, spray paint this black, wait 12 minutes, and then experiment with this stuff. I think that's probably the best idea. Test piece, I just sprayed it like five minutes ago. Parts of it are, are dry already. I'm just going to give this a quick test, um, just to see what happens. I'm just going to dab. Actually, I can't do this while hold, uh, standing up and holding the camera. I'll come back. All right, so... This is what I ended up coming with. I, initially, I was brushing it on here. I think it's just a little bit too much. Um, I tried adding some brown for like just variations of different colored rocks. Um, I did the dab thing over here with this big old brush right here. Um, the thing I think that made it look really cool at the end was um, just taking just the pure silver and going through along the edges to kind of create brushed portions of it. So I think what I'll end up doing is probably more of a mixture of this for the main pieces. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to work in brown. I'm not sure if that's going to look strange. It might be best just to keep things uniform and not do any brown. All right, so I really started adding in more light colors and just kind of brushing the strokes on. So if I just add more and very little black, we can really make certain areas like uh, pop out a lot more. Kind of a little bit, did a little bit too much over there. I can just screw it, just do that. Uh, what I'll probably do is go over with a, a much smaller brush on some of these in order to uh, add a real light highlight color, like almost white, not quite white, but the full on silver color with no blacks mixed in to really make uh, these areas on the edges just really pop up more like they're kind of like they've been scraped or something. I'm not a painter, but I have to say this is really fun. All right, cool, I'll come back. There is basically the uh, finished product. 
So I basically went over with a smaller brush, lighter uh, gray areas just along the edges. I did the other side panels as well. Looks pretty damn cool if I have to say. I wonder what it'll look like obviously once it's all together with the lighting and all that stuff, which obviously I will show you. I couldn't help myself. I decided to add some brown. So I'm going to do that to the main piece right here. I'm just taking um, the brown, black, mixing it together, and just kind of working it in quickly, just so it doesn't look purely like <laughs> lava. In this section, it really does look like lava, though. Um, but on the stone sections, where it looks like they're actual rocks, yeah. it kind of looks interesting. All right, so now we're gonna take this piece and I'm gonna silicone it to the back wall. So I'm just gonna apply um, a bit of silicone here and probably use clamps to make sure it's really against it. Um, and then do the same thing to the sides. So I have one clamp here and I just put uh, as a few just lines of silicone from like this portion up. Same thing with over here and then um, Pretty much the same thing with the back. So, uh, this is what it looks like at least so far. So unfortunately I don't have any more footage, but there really didn't need to be because once that dried up, which honestly, I only waited about four hours. Then I applied the top, I actually added the, the two glass panels and then I slid the top panel on and then secured everything with screws. And that was essentially all the process uh, that it took. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. I wish I would have made the, um, the panels higher so that the snake wouldn't be up there. But you know what? She's happy. I actually saw her this morning and she was right next to the radiant heat panel. And I put the heat thermal heat gun on her and she was like 90, 90 degrees. I don't know. She must like being there. Um, either way, very fun build. Hope you, hopefully you guys uh, learned something and make sure to subscribe. Goodbye.